I have here five fantastic everyday carry flashlights or torches that are all worth considering, but which is best? And is it time for me to retire my long-term favorite EDC flashlight? Let's start with this one. This is the Phoenix PD25R and Phoenix makes some of the greatest flashlights out there. This one has a tail switch and a crenulated bezel, which points to a tactical design. It feels solid and well-made and it has a side switch as well as the tail switch. And the side switch has a built-in LED for battery status. And it also has this very usable pocket clip, which is bi-directional, so it can clip on a baseball hat, for example, as well as into a pocket. An interesting feature here is this collar. This unscrews to reveal the USB charging port. This avoids the rubber flap we usually see, and it adds some weight, but I think it is a worthwhile addition. This is the only light in the lineup here which comes with a belt pouch, which is actually great to see and a really good way of carrying this light. In terms of performance, this uses a 700 milliamp hour 16 340 battery, which as you can see is actually quite small for a flashlight of this size. But the benefit is that it can be swapped for a CR123 battery as a backup battery for use in emergencies, albeit with a reduced light output. Maximum output is 800 lumens and the charging time is around two hours, which is a bit on the slow side. The LEDs are luminous SST20, which is seated quite deep in the reflector here and suggests that this is optimized for beam over flood. But the light produced by that LED is a little bit warm for my taste. We have five light levels, five lumen 30, 150, 350 and 800. And the five lumen, the lowest light level has a 70 hour runtime, which is pretty good if you get stuck. This is a bit bright for what you would call a moonlight mode, but it's still very usable. For general practical use, the 150 lumen light level works well, but the runtime is down to two hours, 20 minutes, which is a bit on the low side. And for what I call a get me home light level, which is just sufficient light to let you see where you're going in total darkness, we have a 30 lumen light level which lasts a respectable 16 hours. Let's see that maximum output of 800 lumens in action. And like all the lights here, the maximum output is not for continuous use, but more for short bursts. And the hotspot shows that this is optimized for distance and has a quoted maximum beam distance of 250 meters, which is the longest range in this lineup. This is really easy to use. Just press the tail switch and it brings it on at the last used light level. And then the side switch allows you to step through the different brightness levels or simply hold for that strobe. The tail switch allows for momentary on with a half press, which is good. But what you can't do is go straight to turbo. You have to step through the other light levels to get there. And because it's not clear when you reach the brightest level, you invariably go past it back to the lowest level and then have to start stepping through them again, which is annoying. In practical use, I want to be using the lowest light level that is practical for the situation to preserve the battery, but be able to briefly light up an area with the brightest level before quickly returning to the previous level. And you can't do that here. In terms of size and weight, this is quite big. It's 92 millimeters long which is 3.6 inches and weighs 78 grams or 2.75 ounces. It has an IPX water resistance rating of 8, which is great, means it can be submerged and it costs around the £60 or dollar mark. In terms of the good, it's great quality. It has this really usable pocket clip. It's simple to use, has the protected USB and the dual fuel capability. In terms of the bad, there's no direct turbo access. The light color is a bit yellow for my tastes and it's a little on the large side, especially considering the battery used. Incidentally, all the flashlights featured in this review have been provided by the various suppliers on request. So a big thank you to them for their support. And if you want to know more about any of the lights featured, I'll have links in the description below.
Next up we have this. This is the Rovivon A28 G2 and G2 stands for second generation. And we have here a highly featured light. In terms of design, we've got a stainless steel head here containing a TIR lens, which is a combination of reflector and lens providing a good balance of beam and flood. We have here a transparent polycarbonate body with three internal body lights that's up from two on the original and a removable new style pocket clip which also is magnetic and we also have here a very welcome USB-C charging port replacing the old micro USB on the original. The noticeable change here is the addition of a second switch which is designed to simplify the operation. There are various light options available with the A28 but my choice utilizes a bright white Cree LED with a thousand lumens maximum output and the body lights here are white red and UV it has a non replaceable 850 milliamp hour battery up from 600 on the original and a quoted range of 150 meters and charging time is around an hour which is pretty good it has five light levels 0.5 of a lumen which is moonlight mode also 10 100 400 and a thousand lumen. The 0.5 lumen moonlight mode can run for 150 hours on one charge and for general practical use the 100 lumen light level works well and will last for around seven hours and below that is 10 lumen which at a push will get you home and last a respectable 40 hours. Let's have a quick look at that thousand lumen mode in action outside and as you can see here it has a good mix of beam and flood and there's also a strobe mode and an SOS mode. The body lights are a signature of Rovivon and we have here an ambient white light at two light levels for lighting up a room without blinding everyone around you. Then we have a red light with two brightness levels and also a flashing mode and a strobing mode. Great if you forget your bike light at night or if you want to avoid being run over in the dark or perhaps to preserve your night vision. Then we have a UV mode Mode, less useful I would say but it can be used to validate banknotes, find scorpions and identify body fluids and it also supercharges some glow-in-the-dark elements found within the light which glow for a while once the UV light is switched off. The front switch is mainly for the front light and gives direct access to moonlight mode which is always nice. The rear switch is used for the body lights but we do have a feature here where we can directly access turbo by pressing and holding that rear switch which is great to see but it's worth mentioning that only works when the light is off and that's better than some lights it's not perfect but it's very useful if you want to jump to turbo and back again when the light is on it requires a few key presses but it can be done in a couple of seconds in terms of size and weight this is 76 millimeters long which is three inches and weighs 53 grams or 1.87 ounces and is the lightest in the group and if you remove the metal clip here then that drops to 43 grams or 1.5 ounces has an IPX water resistance rating of 8 which is great and means it can be submerged and it costs around the 50 pound dollar mark. In terms of the bad there's a bit to learn here so it does benefit from regular use and the clip design could be better it just doesn't allow for it to slide in and out of the pocket easily and also we have the battery in here which is non-replaceable. This is the new X0 from Wuburn. Now Wuburn have been around for many years initially making for others and then producing what appears to be rather uninspiring lights under their own brand. But something has clearly changed recently and this new design is unlike anything else I've seen. So credit to them for taking a risk and producing something interesting and different. There's a sturdy pocket clip here and a magnetic base with a very powerful magnet and a single switch on the top here which is held in place with magnets and flips up to reveal the USB-C charging port. This is made from anodized aluminium and feels very well made and solid in the hand. And if you're into adding tritium glow-in-the-dark tubes, 
there's room for six of them in this light. We have here a TIR lens like the one we saw on the Rovivon, and there are two LED options with this light. There's a Samsung 900 lumen with a high CRI for accurate color rendition and an Osram 1100 lumen option with a whiter and brighter light and this is the one I have here and this has a quoted range of 125 meters. The battery used here is an 18350 1100 milliamp hour battery which is one of the largest in this group and it is replaceable and it can be recharged in around one and a half hours. There are five light levels available here. We have one lumen, which is a moonlight mode, 50, 150, 250, and 1100. The one lumen moonlight mode can run for 30 hours on a single charge. And for practical use, the 150 lumen will last for an impressive 15 hours. And the 50 lumen level will get you home and will last for an impressive 40 hours. Let's have a look at that maximum output 1100 lumens in action. And as you can see, we have here a mix of beam and flood. As with some of the other lights, there's a strobe mode and an SOS mode and also a lockout function. In terms of usability, there's a bit of a learning curve here too with this light. So again, benefits from regular use. You can directly access moonlight when the light is off and turbo when the light is on, which is not a bad way of working at all. To get it back from turbo, just press to turn it off and then press to turn it on again and it comes back on at the pre-turbo setting. Not a perfect way of working, but not bad at all. Press and hold when it's on to step through the different levels. That's not my favorite way of working as you can't control the speed of the changes. Strobe is a double press away from turbo and lockout is four presses away. In terms of size and weight, this is 57 millimeters long, which is 2.24 inches, so quite compact but it weighs 82 grams, which is 2.89 ounces, which is quite heavy. There are a few colors available with this light, including this very nice micro spark white finish. This has an IPX water resistance rating of eight, which is great, it means it can be submerged and it costs around the 60 pound dollar mark. In terms of the good, well, we've got this bold design. If you like it, it's also very bright and has long run times. And that switch is very easy to access. There's also direct access to moonlight mode and turbo when the light is on. In terms of the bad, the design could actually be a problem. I find it quite hard to hold without my fingers getting in the way and the clip is very stiff and actually a little bit short for it to go on a belt and also I do find I press the switch accidentally when trying to get it clipped into the pocket. It's also quite heavy for its size and doesn't actually sit very comfortably in the pocket. This is the Ace Beam Pokelit Double A. Now Ace Beam are another quality maker and here we have a copper version of the Pokelit Light which is also available in aluminium and that aluminium brings with it lower weight and cost albeit with a different, I would say, inferior LED. This one though is the slimmest of the lights on offer here and comes with a very functional dual direction pocket clip and a really nice clicky tail switch. In terms of performance, we have here a traditional reflector with a high color rendition. It's a Nichia 519A LED and has quite a warm light because of that. And the quoted range is only 80 meters, which is in part due to the narrow reflector width here and in part due to the maximum output which is the lowest in the group at 500 lumens. The battery used here is a 920 milliamp hour MN14500 with a built-in USB charging socket. And this battery is the same size as a standard AA and this can be used as backup power in an emergency, although again, it does limit the performance. There are only three light levels on offer here, five lumens, 100 and 500. And that five lumen light level has a 58 hour duration, which is not bad. And the more usable light level at 100 lumens can run for 5.5 hours. And then we have the short run time 500 lumen level. And as you can see from this outdoor shot, it falls some way short 
of the light levels on offer from the others in this lineup. In terms of the usability, this is the most simple in this lineup to operate. You simply press the tail switch and it comes on at the low level, turn it off and on again, and it comes on at the medium level, off and on again, and it comes on at the high level. So in terms of stepping through the light modes, it's not that quick, but again, there's only three to choose from. In terms of size and weight, this is 95 millimeters in length, which is 3.73 inches and weighs a pretty hefty 94 grams or 3.32 ounces for this copper version. And it is IPX8 like the others, so it can be submerged and costs around 45 pounds or dollars. The aluminium version weighs considerably less at 55 grams, which is 1.92 ounces and costs less too at nearer to the 30 pounds or dollar mark. But it does have a different LED, which equates to shorter battery life. In terms of the good, very simple to use. You've got the dual fuel capability and it's got a very nice pocket clip. And in terms of the bad, it just lacks features and power compared to the others in this group. If power is your thing, then this, the Imolent LD70 should be on your list. This looks a little bit more refined than the others in this lineup and the outer case is largely anodized aluminum and it has this very nice short travel clicky electronic tail switch. There's also a bespoke magnetic charging system here, which is a method of charging used across imminent flashlights. And it also has a very useful OLED display, which is pretty much hidden until illuminated. At the business end, we have an orange peel reflector and a very large LED, which combine to create a very bright floodlight pattern. There's no pocket clip here, but there are a couple of holes here so you can attach a lanyard. In terms of performance, the maximum output of this light is a significant 4,000 lumens. And like all the lights here, that high output lasts for under a minute before dropping down. So it's really for intermittent use. This uses a single XHP 70.2 LED, which is what we see used in the large multiple array, very high output lights. And the battery used in here is a fixed 18350 1100 milliamp hour battery. The same in fact as we've seen used in the Wuburn, although in that flashlight, the battery could be changed. And it's worth noting, this is a much larger flashlight than the Wuburn, despite the fact that they use the same battery. And it charges in around the same time, which is around one and a half hours. We have five light levels available with this light. We have 20 lumens, 200, 900, 2000, and then that 4000 turbo. The lowest light level at 20 lumens is too bright to call a moonlight mode, but it does last for a respectable 15 hours, which is plenty for most people, unless you get really stuck. And this is also bright enough to get you home. The more generally usable 200 lumen output will last for around three hours and 50 minutes. As you can see from this outdoor shot, that 4000 lumen turbo mode is incredibly bright with a very broad spread of light and blows all the others out of the water in comparison. In terms of usability, this is simple to use. Simply press to switch it on and then hold to step through the different light levels. Again, not my ideal way of working because it's slow, but it is easy to remember. And then hallelujah, we have direct access to turbo mode whether the light is switched on or off, which is a great feature. A simple double press switches it straight into turbo, which is ideal. The OLED is very useful to check what mode you've selected and also shows the battery voltage. Although I've no idea why they didn't show a segmented battery image instead, which would be much easier to understand. Strobe can be accessed with a double click from Turbo, which is a bit awkward, but personally, I access Turbo much more than Strobe, so that works for me. Importantly, it has a lockout mode with four clicks, and that's important because the tail switch is very easy to press, so this could easily come on 
in the bag and get very hot and there's no tail cap to unscrew to deactivate it that way. In terms of size and weight, this is 81 millimeters in length, which is about 3.19 inches and weighs in at 87 grams, which is 3.07 ounces. It has an IPX water resistance rating of eight, which is great, means it can be submerged like the others, and it costs around the 60 pound or dollar mark. In terms of good, well, it's got that really bright 4000 lumen light level. It also has the very useful OLED display and direct access to turbo. In terms of the bad, well, the battery is non-replaceable. That bespoke charging cable is a real pain in my book and it has no pocket clip and it's quite big. So here are all the lights together and they all have their own individual benefits. For example, the Wuben has the best battery life, the Immolent, is the brightest the ace beam is the simplest to use and the most compact the row vivon has the most features and is the lightest and the phoenix has the longest range so if we compare all the beam patterns side by side at this white wall which is 20 meters distance from the flashlight you can see that the phoenix has a defined hotspot which points to that longer range the ace beam you can see here is falling short in this comparison and you can see the significant power advantage achieved by the Immolent. The prices here are close enough not to be a deciding factor, but when it comes to use, direct access to turbo is important to me. And so for that reason, that rules out the Phoenix and the Ace Beam. The Rovivon has direct turbo access, but the light has to be off to allow this. Not perfect, but it keeps it in the game. And it also has those unique in body lights, which I think are genuinely useful. The Wuben is compact, although rather heavy, and has great run times and a replaceable battery. And if you like the right angled head design, which is great, say, for attaching to a chest strap on a backpack or for table standing, then this could be a great choice. I don't, though, find the square shape pocket friendly at all. The Immolent has that amazing 4000 lumen turbo and direct turbo access, but it is big, has no pocket clip, and that bespoke charging cable, which you are sure to lose or leave behind, is actually a deal breaker for me. So if I had to choose one in this group, it would probably be the Rovivon A28. It offers a great balance of light output and duration. It has those in-body lights, low weight, a pocket clip or lanyard carry, and has direct access to turbo and moonlight mode. Niggles aside, these are all great lights and you would be happy with any one of these. But for me, and this is a personal thing, they are all too big to have comfortably in my jeans pocket all the time which is what I look for in an everyday carry flashlight, especially when you compare them with my EDC flashlight of choice, which is the Rovivon A8. The A8 is much smaller and lighter than any of the lights here, as you can see, but has all the functionality of the A28, albeit not quite as bright and with shorter run times, than the bigger brother. So for now, I will stick with the A8 for everyday pocket carry and then switch to a dedicated tactical light with a larger battery for more light and longer duration when I know I'm going to be out at night. And since you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel grow. So that's it for this one. Thank you as always for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.